We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to Tip of the Week. We all use different material for our fuel lines. Some of you use aluminum tubes, some use the stainless steel flexible tubes, and some use rubber hose. Rubber hose is great because it tends to be inexpensive, it's easy to use and install, and you can get it at your local automotive store. However, you know that you don't want to just grab anything at the auto parts store. You want to get the right stuff. So let's take a look at how to evaluate and choose the best hose for your home-built aircraft. Few would disagree that rubber hose fuel line is the easiest to work with and easy to install. Why wouldn't rubber fuel hose be the ideal choice? Let's take a critical look. If we choose the correct hose from the auto supply house, it can be an excellent choice in our aircraft. One of the shortcomings of rubber hose is the fact that it has a limited life. Rubber fuel hose is never to be considered a permanent part of your aircraft. It has limited life and must be replaced as soon as it starts to fail. Therefore, be careful to install it only in areas of your aircraft that are easily accessible so that you can get to it when it needs replacement. If you never studied rubber fuel lines before, you might be surprised to know that they are manufactured to specific standards by the Society of Automotive Engineers, and there are other standards in Europe. Let's limit our discussion to the hoses you can find at your local auto parts store. Before grabbing any hose that may have originated from an auto parts store and using it on your aircraft, take a closer look at the printing on its cover. The SAE standard that the hose was manufactured to will appear on its jacket. It will tell everything you need to know before putting it to use. Look carefully at the jacket of your hose. You should see either an R6, R7, or R9. This is the industry standard rating for the hose. Once you have found this, you now know exactly the characteristics of the hose you're holding. For example, the pressure limit. An R6 and R7 are essentially the same, very close. It has a pressure limit of 35 PSI. Compare that with a hose that has a rating of R9. This is for fuel injection systems. It can take up to 180 PSI. Carbureted engines can, of course, use an R6 or R7, a fuel injected engine, demands that you have an R9 rated hose. Permeation, which describes the fuel's ability to escape through the walls of the fuel tube, is very high with R6 and R7 and very low with R9. Why do we care about this? Aside from the impact on the environment, escaping vapors wash out the rubber compounds of the fuel line causing cracks and deterioration. So this is not a good thing. Even though R6 and R7 are considered gasohol and lead-free resistant, their permeation is still high, much higher in comparison to R9. Take a look at this chart to give you an idea of the difference in magnitude between this permeation between R6 and R7 and R9. It makes a large difference 
to the lifespan of the fuel hose. Obviously, because of this high permeation, our lifespan is relatively low compared to R9. And of course, there's always a cost involved with these characteristics. R6 and R7 are considered low cost in contrast to what we have to pay for R9. Another hose you might not find at the auto parts store is SAE R14. Now this hose is known as the small engine hose. Its pressure limit is on the low side so it's not suitable for fuel injected. However its permeation ratings is low so this is a good hose. It will provide a long lifespan and the cost is somewhere in the mid-range. Notice this slide from the Gates Company, maker of fine rubber hoses. They are basically warning their customers, and they're referring to the R7 hose, that this is not always the appropriate hose and should be considered carefully prior to purchasing and using it appropriately. Remember the best hose is the R9 standard. Now take a look at this hose here. It does say fuel injection hose but then there is no SAE printed on here, rather a DIN 733792A. This hose is the European standard, the DIN, and even though it will take high pressure for the fuel injection, that's what the 2A means, it is not equivalent to our SAE R9 so be careful if you're trying to interpret these DIN European standards. What we're looking for with a DIN is not a 2A but rather a 3D and that would be equivalent to our R9 SAE standards. With the somewhat high price of the good fuel hose it's often tempting to purchase in bulk off of places like eBay. And that's okay as long as you know your vendor. Anybody can print the SAE standards on the side of the fuel hose. You need to trust that it is what it says. So let's summarize our findings. Which hose do you want to purchase? It's up to you, just know what it is you're buying. R6 and R7 are both fine as long as you don't have a fuel injected engine that needs high pressure and you don't mind replacing it every few years. R9 on the other hand is good for both carbureted and fuel injected high pressure engine and will allow you to go probably 10 years or more between needing to have it replaced. All rubber fuel lines need to be replaced. The big difference is how long they last. And R14, which has a long lifespan, low permeation, just not made for the high pressure engine applications. And of course, the cost. We left that information off because you will find a wide range at your local auto parts store. But get on down there and take a look at what it costs and you can decide on the best rubber fuel hose for your aircraft. What if a hose in your hand doesn't have an SAE rating printed on it? Does that make it a bad hose? Not at all. 
having that marking is a business legal decision by the hose manufacturer. They have to apply to the Society of Automotive Engineers to be able to use that marking on their product. So it may still meet or exceed these SAE ratings we've been talking about. It just won't have the SAE rating printed on the side. So what do you do about that? Google. Google the manufacturer and the part number that you do find on the hose. I would never use a hose if it didn't have a part number and manufacturer name on it. And you will find out from their data sheet exactly how their hose compares to the SAE ratings. They are proud to tell you that it exceeds one rating or another and that way you can judge exactly the quality of hose that is in your hand. What about marine hose? Marine rubber fuel hose is unique in that certain popular ratings for this product define that the hose can withstand an engine fire for a couple minutes. Add to that it has low permeation and is rated for all fuel blends. The drawback is that it can be very thick in diameter due to its fire rating. Appropriate clamps must be used. It is also on the expensive side. And there you have it. Now you know a little bit more about what to look for next time you wander in to the auto parts store. Just don't tell the counter person that you're going to be using it on an aircraft. You might not get that hose out of the store. But until next time, everybody, back to building.